Whew. Well, Resident Evil 3 got a remake, and honestly, it was freaking amazing. I mean, it was action-packed. It was amazing to see Nemesis in HD. It was so freaking cool. Having said that, though, it still doesn't hold the candle to Resident Evil 2. I mean, this thing is perfection, and that the same goes for the original. Now, I'm not saying if you prefer Resident Evil 3 Nemesis to Resident Evil 2, that, that's not what I'm saying. It's just my personal preference. But, with the remake of Resident Evil 3, well, how does it compare to, well, the original, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis? And yeah, that's what this video is about. I'm going to be comparing the original versus the remake. And yeah, the criteria are visual presentation, sound, gameplay, story, and lasting appeal. Now, I'm going to compare these as unbiasedly as possible. Well, I'm going to compare these as a Resident Evil fan because obviously that's what I freaking am, but I'm just going to give these two a fair shake. It doesn't matter whether you know this one's newer and like, or this one's a classic, nostalgic feeling. No. I'm going to try to just clear that out and just try to see it for what they are as much as possible. It's going to be impossible, but whatever. So yeah, let's start it off. First up, let's talk about the graphics. And between the two, there's an apparent difference. Now, I'm not going to just compare the resolution of the polygon count, because duh, there's a clear winner there. No, instead I want to focus on something that can actually give the original a fighting chance. And that is the design of everything. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis came out in a time where 3D graphics were still pretty primitive. Video game designers had to work with the limitations presented in front of them, and wow, did they pull off something great here. Granted. They reused many of the assets from the OG Resident Evil 2, which came out only a year prior. But so did the remake. The original's director, Kazuhiro Oyama, and his team were tasked to create a more obtuse vision of Raccoon City, just around the time where everything was about to go to hell. And honestly, it's a view to behold. Every fixed camera frame is beautifully detailed with absolute carnage littering the streets. Grime, cars on fire, and dead bodies perfectly emphasize the dire situation at hand. Each street corner displays a different story of a poor soul trying to get out of the city, and this is displayed with basic contextual clues. From the police station to the city park, the design just screams to the player, you have to get out of this city right now. There is no hope left, and every landscape, apartment building, and landmark is just begging to be wiped out by a nuke. So yeah, the original just knocks it out of the park here, and just gives you, well, what a damn city would look like right before it's about to get destroyed by a nuke. If things got that bad, it's going to look a lot like this. So yeah, that's the original. What about the remake? Well, it's much more of the same. But cranked it to 11. Very much like the Resident Evil 2 remake, Resident Evil 3 accentuates what made the original so great by upping the production value. Where RE2 is far more horror themed, RE3 Nemesis definitely starts tipping the scales towards action-based mayhem. Way before Resident Evil 4 ever did. And in this respect, Remake 3 delivers. The streets feel much more populated this time around, whether it be civilians trying to make a mad dash away from the undead horde, or the absolute destruction left behind by the previous panic-induced riots. The scenery is much more brighter thanks to the use of many neon signs. But it doesn't go overboard, and retains the dirty aesthetic from the original. Zombies are still grotesque since their debut in Remake 2, and the new enemy designs are horrifyingly bizarre, from the armor-plated beta hunters to the more amphibian-looking gamma hunters. But even then, these are merely an extension of the original, which, mind you, also portrayed these enemies impressively well in the PS1 era, to the point where this pixelated mess to some is still seen as a viable horrific threat. So yeah, how do we choose between the two? I mean, yes, there's much more, you know, production value, but there's still the exact same, you know, design all the way through, almost. Well, the deciding factor here is going to be, of course, the star of the show himself, Nemesis. And if you know Nemesis, you know that he's iconic. Not only from his appearances in Resident Evil 3, but from his appearances in other Capcom properties, such as offshoot games like Project X Zone, and even being a fighter in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Nemesis is not only an icon of Resident Evil, but a recognizable character in all of gaming. So, when the remake developers decided to update his design to fall more in line with the, you know, more modern feel, it did cause some people to cry afoul of his new look. Gone were his stitches in favor of a more fused, lab-grown monster look. 
He no longer wore a custom-made leather coat, instead in its place a body bag stretched and ripped around him to replicate the old coat look. Almost like an homage. And this gave him a much more out-of-control beast vibe, rather than the determined enforcer we've gotten used to. And you know what? I kinda love it. His new design is a stark contrast from the original and the finer details, but he is still Nemesis. And in this case, a far more believable, unstoppable killing machine. Maybe I'm chalking it up to nostalgia, or I've just gotten used to the old design, but the fact that the original Nemesis kept coming back after all the hurt I put on him, with really no difference, made him feel less real and much more like a scary Looney Tunes character. Whereas in the remake, Nemesis is the real deal. And I can easily see him taking on an entire army, especially when he evolves more into a grotesque B.O.W. Which honestly, feels more natural this time around, because of all the abuse Jill puts him through. I mean, Jesus Christ, he just won't go down. So yeah, the point here goes to the remake. I mean, for the dilapidated nature of the whole freaking cityscape, the freaking just attention to detail, and just Nemesis in general. I mean, that guy's gonna be freaking chasing me my freaking nightmares from now on. So yeah, winner here is Remake. Next up, sound design. Okay, since I still have the character of Nemesis on the brain, I just have to say, that the new voice they gave him is spine-chilling. I mean, the original is once again iconic as all hell, but I mean... The second I heard his new voice in Remake 2's updated demo, I nearly shit myself. <laughs> the extremely low gravelly bass and the utter hate you hear in the voice performance is just perfection. And the end result doesn't disappoint. Sadly, you never really hear him before you see him in the remake and, and all of his encounters, but it speaks volumes and all I need to hear is the sound clip and I begin to look around nervously. Now with that, you should definitely know that remake soundscape is a freaking treat. But to be honest, nothing that really stood head and shoulders over the original. Besides Nemesis, the remake does a fine job encapsulating the sound of a world going to hell real quick. With many explosions, the shrieks of the undead, gunshots in the distance, and the sound of low-bearing walls coming down as Nemesis makes new doors in every building he enters. But that's just the problem. It just does a fine job. But you know what also does a fine job? Well, the original. Very much like the remake, each of these games basically took the same sound effects from the respective prequel and ran with them. Except for one huge thing. The soundtracks. And well, the original wins here, by far. Now, don't get me wrong, the developers definitely heard fans and corrected many of the issues that people had with Resident Evil 2 Remake's soundtrack. Whether it was, you know, the fact that the songs were much quieter and somber versions of their predecessors, or the fact that the music just stopped playing outright, making the halls of the police station feel empty. Well, here, they fix all of that. Each song packs a punch, and the music definitely gets your heart pumping. Now, I don't know what it was about the original soundtrack, but sadly, as much as I do enjoy it and, you know, really got my heart going, none of it is really, truly memorable in the remake. The songs serve their purpose, and they're great in the moments they underscore, but I just as quickly forgot about them as soon as they ended. I'm trying to rack my brain here whether it's just pure nostalgia, but the fact that I can remember the theme songs of Nemesis and, you know, the, the save theme, and hum it just as easily as something as modern like, you know, Nathan Drake or the theme song to, like, Bloodborne, kind of speaks volumes to the original's OST. Now, maybe it does take time to sink in, but let's get real. With this game, it was instant. So yeah, the point goes to the original. Even though the new nemesis and his freaking star streak is so goddamn good. I mean, kudos to the remake, but in this case, yeah, the soundtrack wins it for this one. All right, let's move on to the most integral part of a video game, the gameplay. Now, I know some of you out there just outright hate tank controls, and I get it, I really do. But I'm also someone who just outright loves them when they're utilized perfectly. But even here I have to admit that the moment that Resident Evil 4, you know, changed the controls, I never wanted to look back. I mean, I will replay Resident Evil 1, 2, 3, Code Veronica and Remake any day, rain or shine, but the moment that the games evolved to a third person survival horror gameplay style, it was crazy to think that Capcom would release another game with fixed camera angles ever again. And they probably never will. But in this case, with the remakes, the gameplay style does feel a little more, you know, reminiscent of the tank controls. But yeah, in the case of Remake 3, thanks to the new dodge system, the third-person survival horror genre has never felt better. And this makes sense. I mean, Jill Valentine was a far more capable survivor than Leon Kennedy or Claire Redfield in 1998. 
so her feeling like a badass is natural. Whether she's perfect dodging an enemy attack and shifting to a bullet time mode to pop up a headshot, or simply running away from Nemesis as he chases her holding a literal wall from an apartment building, Jill feels like an equal adversary to the Juggernaut. So yeah, the remake is phenomenal in the gameplay department. But having said that, I mean, so was this one. And in many ways, it was a freaking pioneer in the survival horror genre. It's the first game in the series to introduce a dodge system, albeit a much more primitive one, but it worked wonderfully once you got the hang of it. I even think that it was the first game to introduce the 180 quick turn, a mechanic that is now a mainstay in pretty much every third person shooter. So who wins here? Well, I saved the biggest feature for last, at least in this case, because, well, the remake does not have this mechanic at all. And it's of course, the live selection. In specific moments in the game, the player is forced to make a choice between two options or do nothing at all in a short amount of time. And with these choices, the game actually changes things around, from changing the path a player takes to how certain elements in the plot unfold, to even outright skipping entire boss fights. This was surely missed by many in the remake. Although as far as gameplay aspects go, it's not really that great. Now, as a tool for the next criteria, holy shit, it's a game changer, literally. But as an actual gameplay mechanic, it's still just a quick time event. I think it's a huge bummer that the remake is missing it, but I gotta be honest, I like many do not like quick time events. And yes, while the remake does have some as well, there's nothing you know really revolving around it. Instead, the action packed gameplay style mixed with the item management and puzzle solving makes this the quintessential gaming experience out of the two. I really want to give it to the original, but I just can't because of the sheer mobility, just the tight controls. I really do like tank controls, I've said this before. But I just, it's the, the new third person style is just too damn good. Despite it missing features, I just can't go back without, you know, just nostalgia tripping. For a new game, it's it's gotta be like this because the controls are just perfect for this style of game. For overall action based fun, the remake had me engrossed with the gameplay alone. And if not for that, for just how tense every encounter with Nemesis ends up being. That son of a bitch is OP as hell. And he is perfect in my eyes, because I played this game in my first playthrough on Hardcore. And his non-stop barrage made me feel like I was fighting an enemy worthy of the title, Nemesis. Hmm, it really did seem like I was gonna side with the freaking original here, but I, I just can't. Again, I like tank controls, but I'm equally as happy that they're not the norm anymore. So, yeah, point goes here for the remake. Next up on the chopping block, story. And well, this one should be obvious now since the last category spilt the beans. But let's see, did the remake's decision to streamline the plot make it an overall better experience? I mean the option of choice is cool, but does the linearity actually help with the overall pacing and make it a more cohesive story? Well it actually does, in some cases. Just to get this out of the way, yes, the Raccoon City Park, the cemetery, and the clock tower sections in the original are not present here in the new game. But the game does not suffer from this, like some would have you believe. What is left in its place is a far more focused adventure through a pretty big neighborhood of a city, the sewers, a quick visit to the Raccoon City Police Department, a bigger hospital, and a vastly bigger underground lab. So pacing wise, it should feel a bit more slower, staying more in certain areas compared to the original constantly changing areas. But in the remake's case, with its constant chase sequences, well, let's just say with every transition from area to area, it feels much more like an event this time around. But yeah, that's just the pacing. What about the characters? Well, Jill, Carlos, and the rest of the supporting cast don't change really drastically at all from the original versions. Jill is still a badass who uses her fear and anger of Umbrella to fuel her need to get out of the city. Carlos is still the selfless yet flirty scoundrel as we knew him in the original game. And everyone else fits their roles to a T albeit having noticeably smaller roles this time around to fit in some more familiar faces, or at the very least putting more focus on the main two. Some of the quote-unquote new faces are actually Marvin Brenna and Robert Kendo, who make brief appearances showing what happened to them before the events of RE2, which is a nice touch, but there is one huge gripe, and that has to do with the fact that Brad Vickers' role felt severely diminished in the new game compared to the original. In both versions, he acts as the game's herald, warning Jill of the nemesis, but his ultimate death at the hands of the beast in the original is not present in the remake, and it's a real shame. 
especially since besides Jill, he's the last remaining STARS member in the city. Supposedly. But yeah, besides the characters, what about the actual plot itself? Well, same with the characters. It's the same general structure. Jill is trying to escape Raccoon City, she then meets Carl as a UBCS agent, there is a BOW on the loose hunting down the remaining STARS members, and there is a missile coming to destroy the whole city. As bare synopsises go, it's the same. Instead, it's in the finer details where it begins to become more apparent at how different the two really are. The original Resident Evil 3 was originally conceived as a side story to the main series, and it very much feels like that. I mean, it clearly became greater than the sum of its parts, but it still fell in line to the overall vibe that the series had up to that point. Well, the remake decided to take a different approach here. The remake feels less like a sequel to the original Resident Evil games, and more of a prequel to Resident Evil 4, adding plot elements and creatures that lead into more of a parasitic threat than a viral enemy. This is showcased with the new nemesis infested zombies and the updated drain demos display a much more parasitic style of infection that would, well, become the norm from Resident Evil 4 onward. I mean, look at these new creature designs. These would fit right at home in something like Revelations. So kudos to the remake for adding in plot elements and new enemy designs to better connect it with the future games in the series. But yeah, we got to go back to the big elephant in the room, the live selection mechanic. And well, how does it bode in this category? Well, it's frankly game changing. God damn it, that's the second time I've used that pun. Not only does it make the story feel fresh every time you play, but it gives you a sense of control of how you want the story to play out. And I do say sense, because very much like a choose your own adventure book, you aren't fully in control. You aren't writing the story as it goes along. No. The plot unfolds around small, quick decisions you have to make as the player. Sometimes it works in your favor, other times not so much, and especially if you do nothing at all. So yeah, just for the sheer versatility and just the dynamic plot, and just the mysterious, like, what's gonna happen next vibe, I really liked it. I mean, it's the overall same plot no matter how many times you play it, but it's just cool to see these intertwining plot lines and what happens here, what happens there. It's just cool to explore and just delve deeper to the actual plot itself. And again, this whole what if scenarios, it's just really, really cool. So yeah, the winner here is easily Nemesis. And now finally, we've reached the last category. And that's of course, Lasting Appeal. And surprisingly, this is the biggest category between these two games. And it's mostly due to the fact that near launch of the remake, one of its biggest criticisms was the fact that it was far too short. And to that I say, what? I, every Resident Evil game is pretty much short. I mean, from one, two, three, I mean, Code Veronica and four, yes, those, you know, those became a longer, you know, freaking games, but in the case of the first three and, you know, the freaking remakes of the first three, well, remake three is falling in line perfectly with that. So what, what, what the hell are you guys talking about? I mean, just focusing on both Resident Evil 3s, they can each be speedrun in less than two hours, and on average takes the player about four to six hours to beat on their very first playthrough, not including reloads. So yeah, if this is considered a bad game because it's too short, why have people been flocking to these games for years? Well, it's simple. The replay factor. The replayability of Resident Evil games is a huge reason why people fall in love with this series in the first place. Whether it's trying to get every ending possible, or simply trying to master your best clear time to unlock some extra goodies, Capcom understands what it takes to keep players coming back for more. So in this respect, can we identify a winner? Well, let's begin to break down the unlockables and extras that entice us to keep playing. Like all other RE titles, extra costumes, new weapons, and infinite ammo weapons are the norm. And both Nemesis and Remake 3 have those, each one having more of a type than the other. If unlocking different weapons and tools is your bread and butter, the remake is your choice here, with many unlimited options and some brand new weapons to try out on the BOWs roaming the streets. If you're more of a fashion freak, the original's boutique has you covered. The remake has a pathetic display with only two alternate costumes for Jill, one of which being DLC, whereas the original PS1 version has five different costumes, one of which even being a callback to Dino Crisis. Neat. But damn it. I mean, it's just preference at this point, whether you prefer, you know, freaking guns or costumes. I mean, you could like one or the other more. But uh, what about modes? I mean, every, usually with you know, Resident Evil games and you beat the actual main plot, you unlock a special mode. Well, when you beat the original game, you unlock the first official Mercenaries mode in Resident Evil history. I mean, sure, Extreme Battle Mode already existed in RE2, and even in RE1, I mean, on the Saturn version, that they had the first iteration of a battle game. But 
the mercenaries mode we all know and love didn't become a thing until RE3. Going around killing enemies to add seconds to a ticking clock while also trying to get to an extraction zone with different loadouts and different characters. <sighs> the, the mode is it's just a tried and true method of wasting time and you'll definitely have fun doing it. So what about the remake? Well, this time around they don't have a mercenaries mode. Instead, if you beat the game on hardcore, you unlock nightmare mode, which is just the same campaign now with items and enemies in newer areas, and much more deadlier foes. And if you beat that, you get Inferno difficulty, which is only reserved for the best of the best. Not bad, but not great. I mean, are there any modes you can unlock? Well, you don't have to unlock it, but Remake does indeed come with another mode. Actually, a whole other game. Resident Evil Resistance. Now, say what you want about Resident Evil multiplayer games. Oh hell, I'll say it. They suck. I mean, unless the name Outbreak is in the title, they usually suck. Well, thankfully, Resistance is actually a pretty fun experience. Taking some inspiration from 4 vs 1 games like Left 4 Dead, which pitted 4 players versus an AI director, the game works well for what it is, and thanks to some new plot elements in the remake, it is now semi-canon with the rest of the series. Again, damn it. We're still not any closer. I mean, again, it's preference. Whether you prefer a much more, you know, multiplayer-centered experience, or just an arcadey, just freaking good time, I can't really judge the two. And yes, Mercenary mode not being in the, re in the remake sucks. But Resistance is there. And it's debatably a much bigger mode because of, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, time will tell how long people will be playing the game, but regardless, it's still there. And you can play it somewhat in single player. So what the hell do I do here? I know. Let's get down to the numbers. How long would it take you to 100% the game in each of these titles? Now, based off my own experience, with the remake, I had about four serious playthroughs plus replaying certain sections to farm kills. Through that, I was able to get every bonus item and buy all the in-game items in the shop. So that's pretty definitive enough. How about the original? Well, I haven't gotten there yet. Because to essentially complete this game, to collect everything, you'd have to play this game at least eight times. That's not including, you know, you know, getting like ranks and stuff, and like doing specific things. You could just play the game straight eight times and you just have to freaking complete all the other stuff and you'd have more stuff to unlock on top of that. No, this game has eight different things to unlock every time you beat it. At the end of each playthrough, no matter what rank you're going for, the player is rewarded with a new epilogue, each showing the epilogue of main characters in the series prior including Chris Redfield, Ada Wong, to even the mysterious Agent Hunk. Yeah, to get all the epilogues and even a one-time special thank you message from the director of the game, you need to beat the game eight freaking times. Sure, nowadays you can just look all this up on the internet. And they are just still frames of the character with some text. Pretty uneventful. But back in the pre-internet days, this was just gold hidden at the end of the rainbow with gaming magazines being the only hint that there might be more to see in the game you purchased. Those who were obsessed with completing a game would take on the challenge full force. Or you know, if you're a kid who just spent all of his allowance on this one game, you bet your ass you're going to replay it to no end. So all of this extra stuff is just a cool reward. If you really want the most bang out of your buck, it would appear that the original game had a lot more replay value over the remake. Oh and right, in the case of live selection, those 8 playthroughs had the added bonus of feeling different each time as well as triggering an alternate ending. The winner here is clearly the original, which makes the overall winner Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. Well, that's the video. And yeah, uh, I just realized, um, well, I mean, I realized this before, but I just realized I didn't set the whole video. Why did they take away the moniker of Nemesis on the the remake? I mean, th th he's on the cover, but whatever. Um, but yeah, this is a package deal. If you're going to play one, you got to play the other one. These games are phenomenal in their own rights. They have strengths and weaknesses, but they're both great in today's day and age. But uh, yeah, also, if you're calling this a bad game because it's short, the hell's wrong with you? I mean, 
If you're going to wait for, you know, a price drop, that's fine. I completely understand that. That's that's great. You don't have to buy the game right now. But people saying outright this game is bad because it's short, even though it includes a whole other game, Resistance, which, you know, debatably whether you like it or not, is ridiculous. I mean, shit. If you're going to call this one bad, you might as well call Resident Evil 3, 2, and 1 bad as well because they're all so short. That includes the remakes. The whole point is to replay these games, but whatever. That's just a little grip I wanted to point out again. But, uh, yeah. I still love Resident Evil 2 more, but to the people who say that Resident Evil 3 Nemesis is their favorite in the whole series, I get it. Oh my god, I, 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 I can understand you wholeheartedly. So yeah, this is a great game. But yeah, um, other than that, what else? Oh yeah, as far as remakes go, there's news or rumors that there might be a Resident Evil 4 remake. Why? I mean, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying again, I'm not saying anything against it, but four is pretty damn good enough as it is right now. I mean, with the remaster on PS4 and then the PC, it runs great. It still feels great, and it's still pretty damn modern. So I don't know. Just give, give Code Veronica a remake, or better yet, give Dino Crisis a remake, because my God, that's something that definitely needs a remake. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. But yeah, that's the video. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, share the video around because it really helps me out. One last thing. This is being filmed during the, you know, the pandemic. So, now this is not addressing all of you in the audience, but it is to some. And I'm just going to say it right now. Stay the fuck home. Jesus Christ. See you guys later.